Hello, boys and girls. How is everybody doing today? Boy, y'all are starting in early. I've already got a few questions lined up. But before we dive into that, let's look at some that I may have missed last week. It's not like a deal to y'all. Hope everybody's doing well. <clears throat> German Hernandez had asked me, I have a 3000 mule. The spark plugs are very wet. I already checked the carburetor, it's fine. But the problem continues. Well, I wish you would give me a little bit more information than that. Wet, or are they covered in oil, or is it fuel? I'm assuming that it's fuel, since you uh, mentioned the carburetor. And what's your definition of fine? Because if it's uh, if it's soaking down the uh, the cylinder walls with too much fuel, making it run extremely rich, then uh, that would indicate that you know not all is well. Um, Probably the uh, the first place I would uh, look on that particular carburetor is your air fuel screw. Those have a tendency of backing out over time. The 3000s uh, uh, series mule, they vibrate pretty heavily. And uh, I've seen where it can over, overcome the, uh, the screw or the spring and actually back out. So you might want to make sure that your uh, air fuel screw is uh, where it started, if indeed it is fuel that's uh, making the spark plugs wet. So if you get this message, go in and uh, see where they're set and let us know if I was right or not. Lincoln Marsh. Hello, John. Lincoln Marsh here. I asked you a question about my 2022 Kodiak 450 a while back regarding coolant. Okay. I did, uh, did end up adding coolant to my overflow bottle and the coolant was added was the Yamalube 6040 pre-mixed. But the coolant I added was blue and the coolant was in the machine was green. Hmm. Is that a problem or is the just different colors uh, just die? Um, well, it sounds like, well, it's a 22. And I, th I thought the, all the Yamahas came with the, uh, the, the blue fluid as well. So I'm a little curious. Did you buy it new? Had somebody already done some work on it? Um, but if that's the case, the, if it did come with actually green uh, colored um, coolant, I wouldn't worry about it if it came from Yamaha. And certainly you did the correct thing by using the, uh, the Yamalu type coolant, even though it happens to be blue. I don't think that'll hurt anything at all. So I'm going to go with, uh, is it's just a dye uh, difference uh, that uh, you're actually seeing. Hmm. Wesley Lott had asked me, Hey, John Talley, sorry, I just missed you, but I have a 2012 Polaris Ranger EFI. I purchased this buggy with the guy stating it had a wiring harness short. Okay. So I ran down through the harness and checked uh, for cuts or breaks, came up with nothing. So I checked the fuel pressure and it was low. New, new fuel pump would just spin and it would just spin over. Check timing and spark and all is good. About to give up and just decided to check compression and uh, check that off the list and came up with 30 PSI. You found it there. That was the next thing I was going to tell you to do. So after putting in new piston rings and a jug, it's running. But now the problem I'm having is one minute I crank it and it will idle just fine. And then the next time I started to idle for a minute and then just die. I've checked the temp sensor uh, resistance, idle air pressure resistance, as well as spark plug itself. I'm pretty sure it's down to the throttle position sensor as, and I need to set a uh, need a tool to set it but can't find one any help with being able to test it with just a multimeter in any way thanks um i'm all the time watching videos well it sounds like you ran it down you know, you went in the right direction and uh, i think you're you're circling around the solution the um i don't know off the top of my head but you want to look for um, a, a resistance value on that uh, throttle position switch I don't think we did one on the Polaris, but I'll tell you what, I'll be glad to uh, open up the manual on that particular one and uh, give you the, um, the specifications for it next Friday. Sound like a deal? All right. So let's see if we've got a bunch of uh, questions lined up for me yet. Oh, yeah, a couple here and there. <laughs> and uh, Lincoln Marsh is uh, already here, so see if the if he's asking me the same question that I that I read earlier. 
Yep. All right. That one. Glad you tuned in with us, Mr. Marsh. Sprayed and Mike. Hey, John, I was wondering if Electron has a carb available for an O3 400EX. If so, do you know which model and roundabout price? I believe that they do, um, Mike, but I wouldn't know the exact model number off the top of my head. I'm actually considering going with one on that machine over there when we get ready to build it. So I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and do that research to see if Electron makes one for it because I think I'm going to need some more fuel and it's going to be beyond what that uh, that stock one can do. So I'll, I'll let you know next week what I find out. Ivan has asked me, hello, John. I was wondering if there's any way to check a PGM module on an 07 Rancher 420. Um, what are you trying to check on it, um, Ivan? Um, I do know that the uh, getting into the, any of the ECUs on uh, Honda is not an easy thing. Uh, they all have dealership proprietary systems. Um, a long time ago, they had uh, these little these little plug-in testers, a little, like a large calculator. And after after that, they came out with a uh, program that you could only get as a Honda dealer uh, on their Honda laptops with Honda logins and everything else. So trying to open up the uh, the module on one of those, if you're talking about ECU, um, uh, I don't think you're going to be able to do it. No, no way that I know of yet. Although you give these uh, IT guys uh, enough time, eventually they're going to find a way to hack into it. I wish the power sports industry would standardize like the automotive has with the OB2, ODB2 codes and just make life a lot easier for everybody. But hey, I'm not in, I wasn't invited to that uh, roundtable discussion. I doubt they would want to hear my opinion, but hey, <laughs> to each their own. Bradley Owens. Hey, John, watching on my vacation trip in Gatlinburg. I haven't been up there in years. Beautiful part of the country. Finally got some time away from the shop. Hope you have a good day. Uh, today is a good day. Um, my son's coming in town for the weekend. We're going to fiddle around with cars and four-wheelers and side-by-sides and just do some playing and maybe a shoot a couple of videos along the way. It's going to be a good weekend. Hope you enjoy Gatlinburg as well. Um, Greg Likens, I've uh, been looking for transmission parts for a Kawasaki KX250 1994. Woo. No, I do not want to update my windows right now. Go away. Any suggestions where to purchase, purchase some new parts? If we don't have them, there's really no place to get them because we're getting them from the manufacturer. And I assume that being a 94, uh, the pickings are pretty slim. You, know, you may be forced to um, trying to find a, a decent set of cogs you know, just um, on eBay or Marketplace, unfortunately, because uh, if we don't carry them. That means the manufacturers don't make them anymore. And you're just going to have to go uh, source out source out some um, ones that are in decent shape, hopefully. Wish I was more helpful on that for you, Greg. But uh, I understand I'm in the still in the middle of restoring a 1979 YZ 250. Everybody had to have a, a, a Bob Hanna bike, you know, so I'm just finally getting mine 40 years later. Dewey's Garage. Oh, uh, where are we? I'll let it move. Dewey's Garage. Not a question, but just wanted to brag. I changed a tire on a carbon fiber wheel at the racetrack last weekend using my Nomar changer. Do you have any experience with Nomar changers? No, not the Nomars, but um, what I, I do typically use are um, these little gadgets from Motion Pro. And uh, they they pretty much protect the rim and off road machines. They don't care so much, but certainly a uh, carbon set of uh, race rims. I can understand why you went through the uh, the added time and uh, being careful to get that changed. Well done, sir. Well done, Ben. Murthew, hey John, when checking oil on my 08 TRX 700 or 08, or 08 TRX 400, 
When should I check it? Before starting the first time over or after running for a few minutes? I'm finding discrepancy in O level. Yeah, um, it, it definitely will because that's more or less both of those machines are you know almost a dry sump because they have the oil tank. You're supposed to run them X amount of time, uh, like two or three minutes, and then let it sit either 30 or 45 seconds and then check it if memory serves. Um, but just check your owner's manual. But yeah, if you uh, if you check it with it hadn't been well while it hasn't been started, if I remember correctly, it's going to read really really high. <laughs> but it has been a little been a little while since I've uh, had to check the oil on a 400. But I'm looking forward to building that one. Joe McQueen, good afternoon, sir. Two seven a 2007 Honda CBR 600 RR spec for chain. Free play is 30 to 40 millimeters on the bottom of the chain. Clarify, is this the total up and down movement or just the up movement? Um, well, you're, not, you're not supposed to put stress on it, but that is from its natural state here and pushing it up. Um, there is another tool. I'm not sure I can get to it quick enough. From Motion Pro, it's a chain slack um, checker and uh, it'll really get you consistent readings. And I think we have a video of me showing you how to operate it. Really simple to use, but with it, it takes away the, uh, the tendency that you may have to push the chain and stress it more than it should be so you can get it in that range where it should be adjusted. Um, Hank, if you would drop that, uh, that in the link and uh, he can watch that video and uh, maybe pick one up. Uh, chain seems loosey goosey. Uh, well, once again, with that with that uh, chain slack setter, that'll die you in a, a, a lot better. Better too loose than too tight, though. You get one like a rubber band. When it goes to compress, it's going to stretch it even more and even possibly break a chain. Not that I've ever let that happen, just once. <laughs> Armando Cardona, hey, I have an 07 LTZ 400. I've got milky oil. Uh -oh. My starter idler gear has a clear cover so I can see it. Um, no smoke. I'm guessing water pump. Is that accurate? Only milky oil in the crankcase. Yeah, unless you sunk it, um, there's no other way for the water to get or the fluid to get in there. And it more than likely is your water pump seal. So uh, you need to take care of that quickly because let's face it, water is not exactly the best lubricant. Uh, Greg Likens, uh, Electron has two carburetors. The new one is called the billet, ca called a billet carb. Cool. So you're already doing my, my work for me. <laughs> Gary Clark, replacing air filters on a TRX 400 Rubicon. Do the two small filters require oiling as well? All right, there should just be a, uh, okay, you've got an inner and an outer. You should only have to oil the outer one, and I believe that's going to be the yellow one, the yellow uh, colored one. Uh, the, in, the inner one, uh, I would not oil, just the outside one. Greg also came back. I have one very easy to tune. Yeah, I've heard that about them. I still think a PWK uh, Air sticker is better for vintage MX racing, but if you know how to jet and do calculations, true. Chris R. Good day, John. Just wanted to, again, extend thanks about helping me out on my 450R. Uh, took it out and had, uh, had a, a lot of fun at Hank to, oh, you're going to send us a video. Well, you're, you're very welcome, Chris. I'm glad uh, we were able to help you along on that one. Armando came back. Also, my coolant was originally blue after changing the radiator. After noticing the milky oil, the coolant also changed color. It's a dark green now. Well, it sounds like they are uh, intermingling a little bit too much in there. Some water's going one way and some oil's going the other way, probably. So that's definitely going to be an indicator of that uh, seal cutting loose on the um, water pump. I even has asked me, I broke the frame and didn't want to replace it. So I disconnected the battery and welded the frame to fix it and put everything back together and go to start it. And it, and the key just turns over. All right, Ivan, um, which, which machine are we talking about here? And, oh, I wish you would ask me this before. Even disconnecting the battery 
you if you're going to weld on any machine i don't care if it's a car motorcycle atv side by side or anything when you're talking about that kind of current potential stray current you can take out an ecu like that um so it's important that you unplug your modules before you start welding on a uh, welding on the machine hopefully that is not what happened to you <clears throat> Shadow Starker. Hey, John, just a quick update. I found some conical air filters sourced from a small locally owned motorcycle shop for $16 each. Heck yeah. High quality k and copies. Perfect fit. All I had to do was oil them. Thanks again. Well, I'm, I'm glad that worked out for you. Um, good job. Persistence prevails, doesn't it? Sometimes. Greg Likens. Yes, just eBay. They haven't been good parts. There haven't been any good parts. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for you on that, but keep looking. It will come. They will come up eventually. Ivan came back. It will not start. The neutral light just blinks a solid dash, and I don't know what to do and go out to spend for a, a new unit if I'm not confident. That's it. I, I hate to tell you, but that's probably what happened. Uh, uh, the uh, the welding probably zapped it. Paul is chiming in. Armando, coolant turning brown isn't a good thing. Yeah, I swapped out everything on my 660 and it's still blue. Did you flush the system, system totally? I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be oil in there, Paul. What, do you, what say you? Armando came back. Lastly, 07 LTZ 400, full HMF exhaust, K&N air filter, K&N lid, currently at 25 pilot, 127. 172.5 main, and I have a slight backfire. Plug is back there around the edge, but tan on the tip. What should my jets be? Whew. Well, it sounds like you're circling around it on that one. Um, the main, that sounds a little bit on the, on the light side, so I'd probably bring it up a notch on that one, if at all possible, if it is adjustable. Uh, Carmen's asked me, what is the best oil percent for a CR85, uh, John? Depending on the year, but if I remember correctly, it's 32 to 1. If, I believe that should get you in the ballpark. Um, Luke McGowan, hey, John, any advice about why a hot engine would creak when accelerating? Huh. Give me a little bit more information on this, Luke. Well, uh, you're making model. And when you say creak, I mean, it's just making a creaking sound like it's give me some more information on that. I'm not sure how to answer that. Lincoln came back. Thank you for your input, John. Yes, I purchased the machine brand new from the local Yamaha dealer. When I asked them what coolant to add, they just said use regular auto, ugh, regular automotive 50 50 coolant. But I, I used uh, uh, Yamalube instead. Well, you did the right thing, and uh, they shouldn't have told you to use just regular stuff for, uh, for an automotive. Um, not, I don't agree with that at all, but hey, that's just my opinion. Paul Kravinsky, sorry, wrong caller, Lincoln Marsh, Yamalube. Paul came back, stick with the Yamalube, Lincoln. All right, Gary Clark, follow up um, to Phil filter oil question. I was referring to the two small foam covers in the air box. Oh, okay. One is a round and the other is rectangular. There are only a couple, couple of inches long. I, I think both of those are actually filters for the, um, for the vent system from the, uh, the crankcase. So no, you, you don't need to oil those. They're actually there to keep the oil from coming through. Should it spit any back through or anything go in, or anything else going to the engine? But no, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to oil those. Certainly, I would hope there isn't that much airflow going through those two two particular ones because I'm pretty sure they either both go to the engine or one goes to the engine and the other one goes to the uh, the rear diff because I think it has to breathe as well. <clears throat> Lincoln Marsh, uh, the dealership also said during the setup of new machines they just put in fifty fifty automotive coolant. Well. Not at my dealership. No, I'd have a fit about that. <laughs> Kerm, cheers, John. Cheers, Kerm. Pole dancer. Pret <laughs> All right. Pretend I'm five years old. 
Can you explain what causes clutch wear on a modern day wet clutch on a sport bike, such as an R1? What burns the clutch out? What accelerates wear? And how to prevent wear? Well, especially on a, a higher performance machine like an R1, especially if you're, you're tracking it, there's no real way to prevent it other than making sure you change your oil often or as required because as the uh, the clutch discs break down they start contaminating the oil which exacerbates the the clutch plates actually breaking down um a lot of it is uh, determined how fast it wears to, is determined by riding style and how hard you actually ride i mean uh, for my track day car uh, i change the oil every 500 miles because and it's black when i change it because i run the car that hard and uh, but if, if you're just daily riding your R1, you could go with your regular uh, scheduled maintenance. But if you're tracking it and really running it hard, well, then you need to increase the uh, how often you go in and, and uh, service it, whether it be oil or fluids or, or whether it be the oil or the brake pads or the brake fluid or anything. I mean, if you're going to push it hard, then you have to compensate your, your schedule for it. But as far as um, preventing wear, there's no real way to prevent it other than uh, use the correct oil and change it on a regular basis. Luke McGowan, uh, Vauxhall Astra K 1.4 turbo. Well, uh, when pulling away, it sounds like a creaky floorboard sound. I'm not familiar with that particular engine. It sounds like you're from, uh, from England if it's a Vauxhall. Um, I don't know what would cause that sound uh, just because it's hot. Not, not unless it, it's uh, actually shifting in the motor mounts possibly a little bit, making a creaking sound. Check those. <clears throat> Mark Sparks, I purchased a 2020 Polaris 1000 XP with 32 inch tires. How can I get the speedometer to read? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that happens uh, quite often. Um, I heard there was a uh, company called, I think it's ECU Unleashed, and uh, they, are, they, are, they are able to go in and quote, quote, recalibrate the, uh, the uh, um, miles per hour inside the ECU uh, when it's you know, counting the clicks. So they can uh, re-zero, not re-zero it, uh, accommodate the, uh, the different size tires. But that's the only company I know of that can pull it off. Uh, is there a way for you to go into the ECU and uh, change its internal settings? No, uh, they, don't, they don't give that to you. Should they? In my opinion, yes. But yeah, once again, I wasn't imported and, and invited to that board meeting. Ivan came back. Thanks for the info, John. It was an expensive mistake, but as long as I learned, it's not all that bad. Amen. I know all about expensive mistakes on occasion. <clears throat> Armando came back. Paul G., I bought the radiator and didn't think to inspect the pump shortly after I noticed the oil, thank God, and saw the uh, the coolant change color. Bought the pump and going to flush everything. Sounds like, a, sounds like a plan to me, Armando. Man, quit jumping around so much. All right, got it back. Steve, in your opinion, what's better for sand dune riding? A YZ uh, F450 or Yamaha 700 Raptor? For dunes, I'd probably go with the 700 Raptor. Um, uh, that would be the machine I'd want to jump on um, if I was going to go scale the, a sandy mountain. The, the 450, it can perform perform well, but the 700 has got a little bit large or longer wheelbase, if I remember correctly, and it's a, a bit more stable, and, uh, and it is a torque monster, and that's what you need to, to uh, really do a, a decent job of climbing those uh, large dunes. So I'd go with the 700. Lincoln Marsh, so if the dealership really did put 50-50 automotive coolant, then I mixed, Yam uh, I mixed Yamalu with automotive only added a couple of ounces. Hope that won't be a problem. It, it won't be a problem. I mean, I complain, or it is my opinion not to use uh, automotive, um, really anything in the power sports industry. I've just never seen anything good come of it uh, long term. Uh, but in a pinch, yeah, 
if you, if you have to have this, uh, you know, some fluid and it's the only thing available, then, you know, that's what you go with, but then flush it out and then uh, put in what's supposed to be there. Um, in my opinion. All right, Armando, John, why can't I just use regular automotive 5050 coolant? I haven't used it yet, but uh, I bought a, a gallon for $11 versus what is normally in by engine ice 24 for two quarts. As, as I've said, I've, um, I'm just a firm believer in using uh, the, what the manufacturers recommend and what they ship out with their machines um, from the factory. I'd heard that, or, or I've been told that the, uh, that the automotive uh, type coolant, it can either go in a, an aluminum block or a um, steel block. I mean, there's, there's still a few cars out there, older ones out there, they have steel blocks. So it's kind of a compromise. Whereas anything that you're going to find in the power sports industry, it is firmly designed around going in an aluminum block. And an aluminum radiator and it is engineered for that and uh, i believe that if you use an automotive type uh, fluid which is a hybrid or can do both uh, it's not going to do one or the other extraordinarily well and uh, its job is to you know transfer heat let's face it that's you know what it's in there for and i would imagine that the uh, the, the power sports formula is going to be more efficient at that, that than an automotive would. And plus you're talking about a much smaller amount as far as the, uh, the volume of fluid that we're dealing with. And so it has to be efficient. So we're going to go with that. All righty. My Innova motorcycling <clears throat> in my CBR 250R, I had a plug with white dots Woo. Uh, and a problem with cold starting. You said the mixture was lean. You suggest to replace the insulator. You were right. You are my champion. Well, glad I pointed you in the right direction. Paul came back. Armando, I had to replace everything dealing with coolant in, to include the head. It had taken me a few weeks to get it back together and clean. They were floating, uh, had Georgia mud inside, rust everywhere. Welcome to Southwest Georgia. Uh, Armando came back. Paul G. I bought the uh, LTZ and didn't notice until afterwards the radiator was damaged because the shroud blocking it from the front. Went to do a coolant flush and noticed that there was zero coolant. That will be a problem. Lincoln came back. Should I flush the coolant system and fill it up with the Yamalu that I have? That is what I would do, Lincoln. That's, that is what I would do. Paul came back. Now I'm doing the starter or uh, clutch replacing the gear and the flywheel. Oh, fun. Uh, Gary Clark, does the TRX 500 FA have a self-adjusting cam, cam chain? Um, does it have a tensioner in there? Yes, and it, it'll it'll adjust itself as the, uh, the chain start, starts to stretch. So now you don't have to go in and do anything. Moto Restore LLC, how do you all like the new digs? Uh, if you're referring to the uh, the new distribution center, they built a monster over there. And uh, I, I keep teasing y'all about it, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that um, the multimedia team is going to do a, um, a promotional video showing uh, showing what we built over there. It is it's going to it's going to take care of uh, uh, the company for decades to come uh, we've got plenty of room to expand and it is amazing how fast they can get out those parts now i mean literally you you place an order and uh, we we had some of them we timed and within four minutes it had picked the part boxed it labeled it and it was sitting at the back of um, the uh the shipping container truck amazing <laughs> so yeah we're we're digging it Steve, 2014 YFC 450, slight seeping out of the water pump drain hose. Is that a major re requiring seal replacement straight away or continue to use and monitor? Um, it's a telltale sign that you're going to need to go ahead and do something sooner than later. Uh, I, I wouldn't put it off. Would it stop me from going out and riding one more time for a weekend? No, but I, I'd go ahead and address it. 
Moto Resto came back with Bike Man at Kaput. I'm glad to see you guys growing instead of the opposite. We are definitely growing, and uh, we're glad to have you on board with us. And uh, if, for everybody that uh, may have been a little bit delayed, you know, four or six weeks ago when we were going through the transition, thanks for sticking there with us. Um, if you will be rewarded long term because they built we built something pretty pretty damn special. Lincoln Marsh. Also, I live in Alaska where it gets down to negative 40 degrees. Oh, my God. And I don't have a heated space to store the machine in. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. That's all I've got for that. All right, guys. Well, there goes 30 minutes. And I, I think I timed out and got all the uh, questions answered. All right, guys. I'm going to sign off and go home and start playing with Four wheelers and side by sides and cars, because that's what I love doing. Well, I just want to say thanks for everybody swinging by and spending a little bit of time with us, sending in some great questions this week. And we just want to say uh, thanks for uh, shopping with us here at Partzilla. And God willing, we will see you next Friday at 3 p.m. Y'all have a great weekend and a great week. We'll see you then. <laughs>